Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Why You Need a Sourcing Strategy to Attract Home Healthcare Candidates. Today's presenters are Adam Robinson and Linda Florin. If you have a question, please type it into the question or the chat feature of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll be sure to address it at the end. With that being said, Adam, the floor is yours. Thanks, Kaylee. Hi, everybody. My name is Adam Robinson. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hireology. Uh, we're excited today to be talking with everybody about uh, sourcing strategy and the importance uh, to you and your home health care business. All right, joining with me today, uh, we have Linda Florin, VP of Talent Management from Bright Star Care. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Adam. My name is Linda Florin. I've been with Bright Star Care for a little over two and a half years now, and I come with specialties in employee effectiveness and engagement, leadership development, talent acquisition and retention, and management coaching. I began in the staffing world and moved to Fortune 50 and 500 companies before coming to the franchise world with Bright Star Care. I'm excited to be with all of you today. So who is Bright Star Care? We were founded in 2002 by J.D. and Shelley Sun. Shelley is our CEO, and we now have over 300 territories owned by almost 200 franchisees. We deliver professional and compassionate care in the comfort and familiarity of your own home from infant to end-of-life care. We provide nurses, therapists, CNAs, and caregivers, and we have a higher standard of care because we have a nurse oversight with every one of our offices. We are also available 24 seven, and we assist, insist on holding ourselves accountable to be joint commission accredited at each of our locations. We also are thrilled to be able to say we're the only home healthcare company with the distinction of being awarded the joint commission's enterprise champion for quality six years in a row. With that, I'll transition back to Adam. All right, a couple uh, of, of uh, data points on hierology, and I'll keep this brief. Uh, you, you know, what you're looking at now is a, a picture of our team. We're 190 or so professionals uh, located in Chicago and around the country. And all we do is wake up every day uh, trying to help franchise owners be good at the people side of their business. And the one thing uh, I can say to everyone on the on the call today is that everything we're going to be talking about today uh, are, are practices that we have seen put in place and that we ourselves use uh, in the real world. So this is not theory. This is actual best practice based on what we know to work. Um, we, you know, we're working with over 6,000 uh, businesses in the U.S. and Canada uh, and, and use all of this ourselves internally. So feel uh, confident and comfortable that we're certainly practicing what we preach here. Let's talk about the industry. I know I'm talking with folks who, who know this industry well, but to frame the discussion, um, I just want to talk about the industry at the macro level to start. Uh, as you well know, the industry is growing pretty rapidly. Um, by 2026, Americans will spend nearly $6 trillion on home health care. And as spending increases, so does the demand for everything that, that you do. As the aging population and other patients opt for home services over visiting a doctor's office or hospital. Despite this demand though, and, and you're really living this, home health care businesses face pretty significant challenges when it comes to staffing and providing the best patient care while remaining profitable. And that's the key uh, point to make there. Because between a shortage of qualified talent and all the factors disrupting this industry, you're looking for new ways to remain competitive and to grow your business and to serve uh, the, the growing market that we all know uh, is accelerating here. The number one disruptor is, is the growing size of, of your customer base. Baby boomers are retiring, driving the need for more and more care. And as the demand for care goes up, the demand for caregivers goes up and the supply of available caregivers goes down. We've got about 10,000 baby boomers a day turning 65 now. And about half of them are going to need some form of long-term care. We're also seeing disruption in the industry when it comes to the adoption of uh, new software and uh, regulatory and compliance 
uh, rules, and EHRs are certainly at the forefront of that, uh, electronic health records. Um, as more patients opt for EHRs and the option to access records on mobile devices, you're facing some substantial compliance challenges when it comes to keeping information secure. You know, it's not just what your customers want, it's what the federal government wants and increasingly state regulations, and you've got to put compliant measures front and center. Keeping up with this regulatory scheme, uh, it, it's ever evolving, is, is costly and time consuming, and I, and I think we'd all agree that that's not going down, that's going up. And your agency and your employees have to keep up with these changes. It just requires a, a higher caliber uh, of, of worker. In the past, we had fee-for-service as a model really leading the industry, but value-based care is really taking over now. And that's care being delivered by an entire uh, care community in close coordination. So regardless of the number of parties involved, everybody's got to work together. And it's it's no longer how many can you see every day, but rather what is the best care you can provide. And so the, the business model shifting. And lastly, many home uh, care businesses are having trouble staying profitable and are opting for consolidation, uh, selling themselves to larger groups or exploring other options like that. So increased demand for care, ongoing compliance, the caregiver shortage, and just the way the capital markets are working uh, are, are providing a a pretty intense landscape that we're all operating in. And again, I, I know you know this, but it, it's important to set that stage because those disruptors uh, cost us a lot of money. Um, you know, we spent $3.2 trillion on healthcare last year in the U.S., uh, but uh, it's tough to remain profitable in delivering this kind of service. Uh, you know, every day you go without an unfilled caregiver role, those are billable hours you can't get back. That's an opportunity cost that adds up. And so to maximize the opportunity you have in front of, you really need to put a strategy in place to make sure you're recruiting and keeping the right people. There's increasing pressure to provide great care and to do so faster. And, uh, you know, with costs and, and regulatory compliance going up, uh, profitability under pressure. We can't just pay people more um, to find them. It's got to be more than a time for money transaction. So from a job standpoint, what you're looking at now is the number of new uh, positions in this industry that we're going to create over the next four years. Um, just over 700,000. Think about the size of the talent pool and where it is today. You're, you're looking at a, a lot of increased demand being put uh, on the labor pool. So it, it truly is a zero sum game. You're after the right people in your market and when you hire them, your competitors can't. Uh, and the inverse is also true. Um, everybody faces this challenge. Uh, you know, you're looking at um, over the next 12 years, a shortage, this 150,000 headcount delta between where the market's going and where the labor pool is going to be. And you know, really, the advantage accrues, competitive advantage accrues to those providers who can reliably source and hire the right people because there will not be enough people to serve everyone that needs it. Uh, Ten years after that, that, that shortage is going to double. So if you think this problem is going to get easier to, to address, it's, it's just not. It, you can't outrun it. You've got to have process in place to do this differently. But in our industry, it's particularly challenging. 80% of caregivers, when surveyed, said they prefer to work in a different industry. 63% uh, of providers indicate uh, that caregiver shortages are the top threat to their business. And so you're saying, this is my number one issue. Your labor pool is saying, I'm not sure about this industry. And, and the, the only solution really is, is standardizing a repeatable uh, and scalable hiring process. And you've, you've just got to be on your best game here. Yeah, so there was a time when you could post a job and wait for applicants to come pouring in. But those days are long gone. Uh, you can also, you cannot expect applicants to apply and then wait for you to get around to call them. If you don't call them soon after they apply, they're going to be gone to your competitors. That is absolutely for sure. So in addition, you must also be strategic about where you'll post your job. 
Hireology offers many solutions to enhance your posting efforts. Be aware that what works today will probably not work three months from now. The recruiting market ebbs and flows as you have to change things up. So you may come back to today's efforts in six or nine months, but you have to stay on top of things. And the one thing about that is a hierology is able to partner with you and plan accordingly. So I think, you know, we all understand these challenges and that to drive the right outcomes, you've got to specialize the talent pool in your agency with the right employees. And what we find is caregivers with specific traits like compassion, tech savviness and comfort uh, and level headedness are essential to their success. Uh, you know, and you're looking for increasingly caregivers who are certified uh, in certain specialty areas. Uh, and, and the care patient needs can vary among a million different reasons. Um, you know, for example, with the rise in dementia patients, you're, you're focused on memory care specialists and, and the labor pool starts to, to splinter in lots of different directions. And, you know, to really maximize your opportunity, you've got to be good at all of these things. So how can you hire for these specialized roles when your hiring process isn't where it needs to be? Right. What you do is you're, you, you find yourself perhaps marketing job opportunities that the labor pool sees as unattractive, uh, limited branding on your, your local, in your local market from a career site standpoint makes it tough to differentiate yourself. It leads to a lack of, of qualified candidates, both because of the labor shortage and because they really don't get a good sense of what it means to work for you as an employer. And, and all of this together can lead to a lot of wasted time, money and, and effort. Uh, I mean, you all know the frustration of missed interviews, people that they quit a week after they start and all the things that, you know, have you pop an aspirin on a weekly basis. And, you know, the question to ask yourself is, do what does your hiring process look like today? And do I have the right process? Is it giving me a scalable, uh, repeatable, predictable result? If the answer is no, um, there's opportunity here to drive bottom line impacts to your business. So working with Hireology gives you that standardized process and really we're you know, focused on, on two things here. Um, you want to fill roles quickly and you want to improve the quality of your hires. You've got a process for everything uh, from selling new business to managing finances to managing compliance and you watch these things like a hawk. But my guess is if you're like most home health care providers, hiring is, is, a, is more passive than it should be. Uh, it's it's not managed with intention, partly because for 20 years you follow the same process. You post a job on a job board, you hope candidates show up, they do or they don't. Next month you send your money in and do this all over again and kind of lament the challenges that you face. There's, there's a way to break that cycle uh, for bringing in candidates and A players who naturally have the skills required to succeed here. So, of course, the first question is where do I start? Uh, my answer is you want to start with your employment brand. The reason you start with your employment brand is because you have 100% control over that. You can't control the labor pool and you can't control whether or not the provider next door offers a dollar more an hour and you can't control your customers, but you can control your brand. Just like you spend so much time focused on your brand to, uh, to your consumer base in your market, you know, your employment brand is what your labor pool thinks of you as an employer. And so investing in it is critical. It's step one in this process. When your brand improves, just like leads improve uh, for patients, um, the leads improve for applicants as well. And, and strong brand leads to better applicants and not only um, higher quality applicants, but more higher quality applicants. And when you're starting with better leads, as you well know, it's going to drive a better result. Better applicant quality leads to better hires. Uh, and that's really where you find out what kind of manager you are and what kind of managers you have on staff. Because good people don't want to work for poor leaders. So you can't just start with better managers. And you can't just start with, let's build a better culture. That's, that's like a boil the ocean scenario. It's just too big a problem to tackle all at once. Starting with brand as a step one is, is really where we want to focus. Uh, so let's talk about that for a second. You've got to track caregivers before your competition does. And what's interesting is close to 80% of all job applicants uh, submit their application through some form of a career site. Now I want you to think about your career site for a second. 
you know, if you tried to apply to a job at your own location, what would your experience be? Have you secret shopped yourself and looked at the process that applicants have to go through on a daily basis to try to reach you? Uh, you know, it, it really matters. And it's similar to the way that home health has switched from fee-for-service to value-based care. You know, the quality of applicants is much more important than the quantity. So, uh, you know, not only do 80% of people originate their application on some form of a career site, but 70% of applicants searching today originate their search in a Google uh, browser bar search. So you've got to think about a brand that's not only um, talking about why you're a preferred place to work, but it also has to play the SEO game, just like uh, lead generating um, for consumers do. It, it's all the same concepts, and, and they're all uh, transferable. Uh, you know, for a proof point, just consider that if you're running a mobile optimized dedicated career site, that's that's a separate website that has your jobs listed, your employer value proposition, what it means to work for you, some some great uh, content, perhaps a video or two, you're driving 10 times more quality applicants than if you're just using job boards. So investing in employment brand and a dedicated site makes a big difference. So let's talk a little bit further about effective sourcing. You, you spend a lot of money on job boards. Um, you, know, m the, you know, the average location is spending north of $6,000 uh, a year on, uh, on job board spend, but what are you getting? Um, are you tracking this the same way you're tracking your cost per lead on the consumer marketing side? What is that cost? Do you know? And do you know how that uh, uh, you know, man, uh, carries over relative to the industry benchmark? Um, it, it's, it's just like any other marketing source. You know, you've got to track it. You've got to look at the results. Your cost per lead, cost per applicant in this context uh, makes all the difference. And, you know, wouldn't we want to be spending our money where we're getting the best result? I mean, duh, right? That that makes uh, all the sense in the world. But if you're not managing it closely, if you're not tracking the data, there's no way you're going to know the answer uh, to that question. So you've got to invest in a strategy to source talent um, because you can't run a great hiring process without people to run through it. Uh, and our applicant engine uh, suite is a sourcing solution that helps you manage that dedicated amount of spend on a monthly basis. So uh, in effect, uh, you know, taking the same amount of dollars that you're spending on your own in what we call the post and pray method, um, you know, having that spend managed uh, by someone that has data on, you know, what a cost per applicant should be for a home care giver in Des Moines, Iowa, for example, uh, really, really makes a difference. And so you want to you want to work with someone who can help you place your bets more effectively for the same amount of spend. So today, you know, most caregivers are investing in just a few sources. Uh, you know, we, we know who the usual suspects are there. And it's important uh, to utilize third-party recruiting sites. But you really want to expand your reach to hundreds of sources. That could be everything from, you know, national job boards that you're familiar with um, to organic search engine feeds and local classified ads, uh, as well as social media. It's really an all-of-the-above strategy. Uh, and and it's pretty straightforward. You know, you, you you know define what you're trying to fill. You know how many applicants you need to run a quality process. You know what your budget is. It, it's a function of of optimizing that. Um, you know, our data show that 47% of uh, the home care agencies on our platform, 47% of candidates have come from Applicant Engine, uh, and 54% of those have been quality candidates or defined as people who apply and we think, you know what, this is somebody that I want to bring in and talk to. Yeah, and I, let me just reiterate here. Um, while you, you may want, you may be currently using other sources, why not spend your money in the place that's bringing you in your applicants right now? The, the thing that we've found with Applicant Engine and Hierology is, you know, I'd much rather find more quality applicants than quantity. And sometimes when we go outside to those other job boards, all I'm getting is quantity. And it's bogging down my recruiters. It spends way too much time going through people that really aren't qualified for the job. And using something like Applicant Engine is um, spending your money wisely and allowing you to really get a better ROI and a much higher quality candidate. 
So, you know, with today's competitive job landscape, you have to do two things. You have to wow candidates with, uh, with content, uh, and you've got to showcase the benefits of, of working with your company. So a career site's a great solution for um, presenting all of those things and will we'll drive organic lead traffic. Uh, but when you need to boost that traffic, uh, a, a product like Applicant Engine can really help do that. So you may, again, maybe investing in just a few sources, but you know, you're not an expert in, in the digital uh, recruitment marketing space. Uh, and, you know, again, for the same dollar, you can you can reach more people, drive higher quality and fill the funnel faster. And so what we'll do is reduce the time consuming task of manually posting each job board, of manually reviewing resumes in an inbox, of chasing people for interview times uh, and converting them to actual applicants that you want to uh, work with in an interview. So um, some things to, to consider there. So let's talk about some of the components that contribute to building your talent ecosystem. Uh, one thing that is key to successful hiring uh, is a positive candidate experience. And so I want to start uh, with talking about SMS or text-based communication. In July, Hireology added text messaging to our platform. And the solution is included in, in the base subscription. So every, everybody gets it regardless uh, of the level of service. Um, many other providers uh, don't have this feature, and if they do, you, you, you're going to be charged for it. And so with SMS, there's a couple of uh, real benefits here. Number one, scheduling interviews. Um, you know, interview open rates have something like a 35, uh, email open rates for interviews, something like a 35% open rate or read rate. SMS, you're north of 90%. You, you know this from your own life experience. You look at text messages, you don't always look at email. Um, and so scheduling interviews, you know, if you're facing no shows uh, or poor responses to, um, to applicant emails, uh, SMS is going to give you a lot of lift there. Second, uh, it gives you the opportunity to reconnect with candidates who you've interviewed previously um, and, and reach back out quickly. And so rather than sending emails to the pipeline uh, through the platform, you can just text people, hey, listen, we talked a couple of months ago, you weren't. The timing wasn't right. We still have a position open. Would you like to come in? Uh, you know, you can really cut your cycle times there. Third, uh, you have the ability to remind candidates that steps need to be completed. So your, your hiring velocity is going to increase. Um, you know, it's, this process has to keep moving and, and text-based communication we found helps do that. Uh, and then communication becomes seamless. Uh, and so in the platform, uh, any number of SMS or text-based uh, templates you can use to communicate everything from uh, we've received your application to interview scheduling to the follow-up to the offers coming, uh, including you know being able to customize those templates. And so the, the end result is life gets easier for you and the candidate experience goes up. A couple of um, metrics to think about. Uh, using text as a communication channel with candidates our customers have seen a three-day reduction in time to hire. Uh, so think about that. For you know, how much revenue is lost for you every day? You could bill hours, but don't have somebody there. So multiply, uh, you know, your daily rate times three. Every time you hire someone, your opportunity for bottom line impact for speeding this up is three times your your daily billing rate. You know that that adds up pretty darn fast. So, you know, this, this pays for itself quickly. Um, and as we talked about earlier, you know, you've got uh, text messages read at near 100% completion rate. Um, and, you know, you've got a 35% open rate on email and about a 20% or so consumption rate of those emails. Uh, and again, if I haven't uh, beat this point enough, text message is a better way to communicate with applicants. And, and a platform that does that is going to be to your advantage. So let's just take a quick look at what that actually looks like. Um, so your the, the text is always going to come from a generic number. It's not going to be your number. Uh, you know that's not something we we'd advise there. And and what you can see here is is just the interface to to type and track in an audible fashion uh, your communication with an applicant just like it was an email. Um, but the interface uh, to the applicant is through you know their their Apple or Android messaging platform. Switching gears a bit, um, Hireology Insights, uh, which is our easy to understand analytics platform, 
enables business owners to unlock recruiting and hiring data to drive even greater operating efficiencies to see recruitment ROI and ultimately drive profitability. Uh, and so there's a couple of questions we know uh, our customers are asking that if they had the answer to, they could they could drive an even better hiring process. The first one is, how fast am I hiring? Uh, the longer a position goes unfilled, as we've discussed, the more productivity is disrupted. And so with our velocity insight, you can measure and improve time to hire with a really clear understanding of things like, you know, what, what percentage of my applicants have been reviewed? So if you've delegated recruiting to managers inside your shop, uh, and you're spending money to drive applicants and those applicants aren't being opened. Well, you know, you, you know what we call that. I mean, it's just lighting money on fire. Uh, and so, you know, you basically got uncontacted warm leads sitting there waiting for a response. Uh, and, you know, that that's not helping at all. So you want to be managing this pretty close, closely. Second, are you even following the process? Uh, so we have an adherence insight that ensures that everyone in the business that's part of the hiring process is following an impactful, compliant, very important, compliant hiring process and holding team members accountable. So if you're on this call and you're a multi-site operator uh, and you're wondering whether or not, you know, your first or second location are following processes and, and which managers within those locations are on their game or not, uh, you know, it, it, you don't have to dig around to find that out. We're, we're just going to show you the answer. And then third, and, and in most cases, most importantly, which sources result in the highest quality applicants? Uh, the sourcing insight enables you to see which sources of applicants, be it job boards, career site, et cetera, are driving the most quality candidates and which channels result in the most hires and overall uh, end result in ROI. So, you know, the, the lesson being uh, put more money in the channels that yield the best results. So if you're managing that, you can actually do that. So let's talk about business outcomes. Um, here you can see cost savings broken down with Hireology's career site and typical job boards. Uh, what we find is in, in this industry, uh, the, co the marketing cost per hire through job boards is just under $200. Uh, and through uh, your career site, um, that cost per hire is $13. So a 15X increase uh, in going from uh, what you're doing today to, you know, building an employment brand and hosting your own career site. Uh, in the CNA world, it's it's even uh, amplified higher specifically. I mean, you know, you, this is your, your daily frustration, right? So ne never enough CNA applicants. The typical job board cost for a CNA applicant uh, that moves through to hire is about $630. Uh, through the career site, $14, um, you know, cost per candidate, cost per applicant, all of these numbers substantially overperforming. And so investing, again, in your own employment brand and hosting your own career site yields outsized benefit and impact and allows you to take control over what I know is one of the biggest frustrations that, that you have right now. We've helped home care organizations save uh, a lot of money. And uh, as we talked about, you know, with 15 times more cost effective uh, sourcing uh, than job boards and 45 times more effective cost for CNAs, um, it adds up pretty quickly, right? Take control, control your costs, have a predictable recruitment funnel. Uh, just over the last year, the, these data points are, are coming from a broad swath of the industry, um, you know, approaching 600 uh, agencies hosting career sites and running sourcing on Hireology uh, generated nearly half a million applicants uh, last year. Uh, 17,000 hires made at an average time to hire of 21 days. So everything I've just shared with you comes uh, as a result of a lot of data gathered across uh, every state uh, in in the United States where, where folks are operating. And for us, that's 50 out of 50. And so, um, you know, what you're seeing is is what your peers in the industry can do when they manage this part of the business uh, really intentionally. So uh, just just a, a, a quick proof point, some of the brands uh, with whom we work, um, just trust that you know what we're talking about here comes from experience. Uh, it, it's not marketing, it's, uh, it's real data. So let's hear from Linda to talk about uh, BrightStar's uh, 
specific success here with hiring. Great. Um, you, so you'll see a, a, a quote from our CEO and founder on the screen here, but really what I'd like to, to mention is we've been using Hireology since Q1 of 2016, right about the time I joined Bryce Our Care. We've been using another product that didn't allow our franchisees much customization, and switching to Hireology was so easy and painless. Um, with the partnership we've built together now, our franchisees have come to depend on Hireology as an integral part of their recruiting strategy. So let's just say we're very, very satisfied with the number of hires that we're getting these days from Hireology. Um, as we move on, some of the things that we looked at as to why we would choose Hireology, um, customizing our recruiting strategy, developing effective job posts, making sure that we were able to showcase our company culture and values was very important to us, um, and then having a, a way to schedule, conduct, and customize our interviews and drive efficiency through our communication. We were able to do all that with Hireology. Um, we developed those job postings tailored for uh, the demand that we see within our own um, network. We're able to put our own um, touch on, on those postings and our interviews and uh, with collaboration with Hireology, they sit inside the tool. Um, when a caregiver submits an application, the hiring and talent management system automatically sends pre-screened surveys and skills assessments to the candidates. For our business, that works really well because our franchisees can access everything from job postings to assessments to interview guides all in one place. And they're able to be customized thanks to Hireology for Bright Star Care. With Hireology's dedicated support, our hiring process is smooth. Our resources are utilized and resu results are achieved. We have eliminated any existing fear from managing the hiring process because the process is so clearly defined and so easy to use. Um, we have that defined strategy. Everything is seamless for us. If there's ever questions or concerns, they're answered by the support team at Hireology in a very timely manner. And so now, um, you know, we've got the opportunity here uh, with, with Linda on the call to answer your questions uh, you know, from someone who's in the chair uh, doing this every single day. Um, you know, uh, here's Kaylee to reconfirm how best to ask your question, and then uh, the floor is yours to the attendees on the phone. Thanks, Adam, and thanks, Linda. Um, just a reminder, if you do have a question, please type it into either the chat or question feature of your GoToWebinar panel. We do have a couple um, that were sent in, so while you're thinking on yours, we'll, we'll start with that. Um, here's one for, for both of you. Um, if I don't have an ATS right now, where can I go to start building a process for my team? Uh, gr a great question. I think, you know, from, from my standpoint, uh, if, if you're going to operate with, without an ATS or applicant tracking system, it, it, it says to me that your, your system of record for recruiting is probably your inbox. And uh, it's not that the inbox can't work. It's just that you you really have to document expectations with your managers really clearly if you're going to run an email based uh, hiring process. Uh, I mean, I, we've we've done that. I've done that in previous businesses, and certainly I know many of you are are are, are doing it that way. The the issue with email um, is less you and your ability to be responsive, although that can be an issue. It's the collaborative aspect of hiring that becomes a challenge. And so, uh, you know, we're all on the run. I, I interview somebody today. Linda interviews somebody tomorrow. Our notes are separate. We don't know what happened. It's hard. You know, now we're emailing back and forth or the interview shows up and the resume is in my inbox, not her inbox. And she's frantically texting me to forward it. And so document availability, um, you, you know, to, to do this on your own, you know, you're going to have to set up some kind of shared database. You're going to have to document uh, the process explicitly and, and really stay on it. Uh, again, um, you know, not a bad way to go, but you, you just have to, you know, take a pretty high level of scrutiny to making sure everybody is following um, a, a process and that you're, you're saving resumes in a place where everybody can access them. You kind of make sense? 
Yeah, I think I would, you're right with process. The first thing I would say is you've got to document what your process is going to be for the hiring um, for hiring process. And the nice thing about using an ATS, um, such as Hireology, is everything is in one place. So um, Adam's right in saying you have multiple locations that's so hard to access. That's what I love about having an ATS, where everything is in one place. I can share things with people. I can get to um, my... Um, any of my documents, I can get to my uh, reporting to see how things are working for me. Um, it's just a one-stop shop and it makes it more um, convenient and it, it also allows me to be in the moment of hiring and not also being interrupted by other emails coming through my inbox. So when re your recruiting is handled through your inbox, it's really easy, easy to get sidetracked by another email that just came in that you think, oh, I got to go take care of that. And uh, then you've lost your, your focus and your momentum on um, the recruiting aspect of things. And recruiting in our industry cannot be put on the back burner. It is so important that we're spending enough time and getting our quality uh, applicants through the recruiting efforts that we have that I just think an ATS is a much better way to go. Great. Uh, this question, I think, is for you, Linda. Do you find it challenging to get caregivers to actually complete online applications? Um, we did, um, and when we partnered with Hireology, we actually shortened our application quite a bit and realized that the, the market that we're targeting um, is on the run and usually on their cell phone. And so we made our application as short as we could, and we captured any additional information in our phone screens and our interview process. We just want to get their name and, and core information in so that we can start the process with them. So um, that would be my suggestion, shorten it up. So so if, said differently, if if you limit fields to name, email, and, and just the basics and, and then follow up in a survey that's automated or in the process afterwards, people will fill out yes. online applications. Absolutely. Um, again, and the, the suggestion I always give is, Try to, you know, get out your phone and try to apply to a job at your own agency and just note the experience and ask yourself the question, would I go through this process myself? Uh, it's eye-opening for many providers. Great. Thank you. Um, here's another question about Send. I'm spending a great deal with Indeed each month and getting applicants. No other job boards have worked. I'm concerned that if I switch, I won't get enough exposure on Indeed. I think that's a, a concern that a lot of people have, but I can tell you that we have proven in our experiences with my franchise owners, um, I have gotten them to stop spending as much on Indeed by using Hierology the way it was designed. And um, we have had quite the opposite experience. So I've been able to save them money with sponsored posts on Indeed by using the organic feeds through Hierology. And, and this is never a, a, a single source game here. So, uh, you know, you, we're not saying, you know, consolidate all your spend with one channel. I mean, you wouldn't do that marketing your services, right? You're, you're going to have a multi-channel approach. You want to have a multi-channel approach with hiring. And so by no means uh, are you relegated to using only Hireology. In fact, through our platform, you, you, you are still picked up uh, by the major organic feeds like Indeed. Uh, and if you want to sponsor a post with Indeed, you can certainly go do that. Um, what you want over time is to see your spend rebalance from sponsored posts to organic career site traffic. And every time, particularly like with CNA, for example, every time a CNA applies directly through your website and not through a sponsored job board, you have saved yourself $600. I mean, every time, or every time you hire somebody who originated there. Uh, you know, th think of it that way. How can I build my brand such that over time I can reduce reliance, probably not completely, but certainly reduce reliance on my high cost channels and increase uh, my investment in my lower cost channels. And with Applicant Engine, we do that optimization for you with full transparency. Uh, so we're, we're running that playbook on your behalf, uh, which, which you can see, it's not black box. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're built to do that. 
Great, thank you. Uh, last question I see, and then feel free, we have some time if you want to type in any more. Um, if I don't have any open roles right now, what is the benefit of using your solution on an ongoing basis? Well, I have never seen uh, an agency not have somebody turn over unexpectedly the following week. I mean, you know, what if, if you're in a situation where you've got retention rates, uh, you know, south of uh, or, or, or north of 80 percent and in plenty of applicants and this is not a problem for you, I suspect you probably wouldn't be on the phone uh, listening to us right now. You know what? What you've got is is a marketing funnel for people that has to always be on. And with the turnover challenges we face and just the shifting landscape and how competitive the labor pool is, uh, you know, if you want to grow your business, this needs to be uh, an always on process for you. You know, what do you recommend for your uh, franchisees? Right. We, we always um, recommend that they're um, continuing to hire. Um, the, you never know when somebody's going to turn around and, and given their notice, or you're going to have something happen where you're going to terminate someone and you need someone. You also don't know when the next 24-7 case comes in, and that is certainly not a one-for-one, one, as we all know. So if you haven't been uh, consistently getting your name out there that you are a quality organization that's always hiring people and has a need, um, then you're going to be in trouble when that 24-7 case comes in. So we're constantly hiring. Great. Um, I don't see any other questions, but of course, uh, you can always follow up. We, um, we will be sending this recording within the next couple of days, so you will have access to it, and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them offline. Um, thank you so much, Linda and Adam, uh, for your time today, and we'll give everyone back about 15 minutes in their day. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks so much.